the Libertarian Party of Canada hosted their convention right here in Calgary over the weekend. And I had a chance to talk to leader Tim Moen about some of the exciting things that have happened within the last year. Moen tells me that membership numbers tripled in 2015 alone and that there's a big contingent of Libertarians in Ontario and surprisingly in Quebec. But he also tells me that most of the party's growth has occurred right here in Alberta and we talked a little bit about why here. Alberta has had the most explosive growth because we've been very active here. You know, I'm from Alberta, I'm the leader. I think that Alberta's, Albertans are, are naturally libertarian. I mean, we're, you know, by, by and large, people come out west uh, to create their own destiny. And they don't need a hand up from anyone. They don't need government interfering in their lives. Uh, they just need people to get out of their way. They'll go and make something useful, whether it's in Fort McMurray digging in the dirt, producing oil, whether it's uh, in farmland producing food uh, in, you know, Canada's bread basket or, or producing uh, beef. Uh, Albertans are, are made up of people who uh, can get things done and, and want government out of the way. Tim also mentioned that people traveled all the way from Japan to attend the conference and that 2015 has been the party's most successful year in its 43 year history. Libertarianism is definitely becoming more popular, but some people are still unfamiliar with what they stand for. So I asked Moen to explain the party's principles for newcomers. We're about very small government, uh, about a government that's simply there only to protect your rights as an individual, not to impose an agenda on you, not to say who can't, you can and can't marry, not to say how much money you're allowed to make, not to say how much uh, you're allowed to, allowed to charge for your labour uh, in terms of a minimum wage or something like that. Uh, government isn't there to do that, it's simply there to protect you, to stop others from actually doing that to you, uh, but more and more we see government uh, doing the very things it's actually supposed to protect individuals from and so we're here to give a principled alternative to uh, you know other parties that might talk about freedom might talk about small government but in the end uh, they only pay at lip service. I also asked him his thoughts on the Liberal Party and he had some concerns about them straying from election promises. One of the the hopes I had had for the Liberal government was that maybe they would actually um, legalize or, or end um, prosecution of people who uh, use cannabis and, and sell cannabis. You know, as a libertarian, I'm very concerned with the amount of people who are locked in jail who have had their lives ruined for a victimless crime. I mean, w whether you agree with cannabis smoke users or not, um, they aren't harming anyone other than themselves. And we should be, as free people, allowed to do that. And instead, we ruin their lives. And, and so it looks like that is not going to change at all. And since, in fact, the Liberals have taken power, we've seen uh, dozens and dozens of dispensaries raided, uh, hundreds of employees locked in cuffs in Toronto, uh, lives ruined, criminal records. Uh, this is not the, the Canada Justin Trudeau promised. Uh, it seems like the, the jackboots have, have stepped up a notch, if anything. It's very difficult to say where to start in terms of, of uh, uh, criticizing Justin Trudeau. Um, you know, but, but uh, you know, I do take umbrage with the fact that some people are trying to describe him as a civil libertarian. I don't see him as a civil libertarian at all. In fact, I see him as, um, as a bit narcissistic kind of racist and kind of misogynistic, if you want my honest opinion. Uh, I, I think uh, uh, he's the opposite of the way he's projecting himself, and, and so I'm very disappointed with his leadership. And of course, I asked him his thoughts on how the opposition is doing holding the Liberals to account on some of their policies. They're not doing the job I would do of holding the Liberals to account. Um, I think that they're, they're trying maybe a little bit too hard to emulate what the Liberals are doing and they're maybe agreeing a little bit too much with their policies. Um, I, I would take a very principled stance uh, against them, but uh, you know they, they are making some some legitimate points. You know, uh, talking about a referendum in terms of the, the the PR voting system, giving Canadians a say in that. Um, so so you know, uh, it's not what I would like it to be, but at least there's there's some voice there, and, and we can hope uh, for you know, a strong, uh, uh, principled leader of the Conservative Party uh, in the upcoming race. Tim Moen says that Gary Johnson, the Libertarian candidate in the States, is polling at 13%, and he believes that some of that popularity is going to spill over to Canada and increase the already strong core of passionate Libertarians 
that have already formed a party here in our nation. And because he believes that there will be a rise in libertarianism here, he had a final message for other Canadian political parties. Get ready parties, you are going to need to answer to people who demand liberty and we're going to be hot on your heels pressuring you to make sure you do and if you don't we're going to steal all those votes away. Uh, if you have any passion or, or uh, interest in promoting liberty, if you are concerned about the future, if you're concerned about the way culture is going, there's only one place for you, that's the Libertarian Party of Canada. Moen says that he'll be spending some time traveling the country and encouraging new members to join and that the party hopes to have a full slate of candidates running in the next federal election. For the Rebel.media, I'm Holly Nicholas. Thanks for watching. Click here to never miss a Rebel update. Want even more? The Rebel will click here to become a premium member.